I'm going to turn the service to the Brother Joe. Uh, hallelujah. Joe, come on, brother. We sure love you, man. You're a blessing. You're a blessing. Good to have you with us. Go for it. All right. You got until 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. 3 o'clock tomorrow yeah. morning. All right. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Sure is good to be back with you. Yeah. It's uh, fun to be back in your church. I've watched the kiddos grow up. It's not right that they're all older now. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but it just does, you know. Praise the Lord. Thanks for coming. And this morning we got into a little bit about uh, the coming of the Lord. And uh, I, I have a couple things I want to get into tonight, but we'll just see what direction we go. But, uh, boy, I like bringing the claws, man. I could tell you stories all night uh, of people getting just really, really cool miracles because he hasn't changed. Yeah, right. he, he hasn't yeah. changed at all. You know, in the Old Covenant, uh, uh, when, when the Ark of the Covenant was at Obed-Edom, their cows even grew better than everybody's because the presence of God went down in the dirt and the cows were eating the grass. He said, how are your cows coming out like this? Because of the presence of God in that ark that was kept there. It's pretty wild. What's so cool is it goes in those claws. Amazing. And, and the church I attend out there in Marietta, I guess right before I was going to move there, maybe five years ago, four years ago, gosh, I can't remember when I moved there, uh, a man walked up to me and said, hey, my wife's in a saint asylum. Will you pray for her? I said, sure. I said, let me pray over your jacket. I said, uh, he said, she's on Thorazine and lithium, something else, and she's almost like in a... Sh a well, a constant, what's that, catatonic, you know, catatonic state where you're just like that? I said, you put, you lay hands on your jacket, you put it on her, she'll come out the day you put it on her. He goes, really? I go, yeah. I went out there to put a deposit down on a house. Uh, they rented the house out from Hungary, hence my deposit didn't mean anything. So I flew back out to California, and this guy comes walking up to me. First, I'd laid hands on that guy's jacket and said, I command the life of God to surcharge this, and when it's laid on that woman, it'll drive out evil spirits, and she'll be made whole right there. And in any infirmity in her body, the man walked up to me. He said, hey, I want to introduce you to my wife. I, I didn't really remember him because I'd been about six months earlier. He said, I, here she is. She was in the insane asylum. And boy, it hit me who it was. He goes, I put that jacket on her, and it's like something snapped. Sure. The doctor came in, let her go that day. <laughs> and here she, she was in a state to where it just dysfunction. Uh, I, I know another one. I was praying over a cloth for, for a little kid in Germany. It was having epilepsy. They tried all the medicine. It was like almost like, what, what is it where the medicine, it was immune to whatever would keep it from having seizures. Continually having seizures. Lay hands on the cloth. You should have seen the grandmother grab my leg. She goes, my, my, my little nine-year-old grandbaby has not had a seizure since that cloth was laid on him. The one, another one from our, from our church in California. I'm not a pastor, but I travel in and out of there. man walked up to me and said, my sis is at the point of death. They called the whole family in from Baltimore. Said her organs are shut down. She's, she's supposed to die right now. I said, we got to pray. I said, let me have your jacket. I took, laid hands on his black. This is about three months ago. Laid hands on his black jacket. And uh, about two months ago, I was in church. He come running up to me. He and his, his wife said, hey, we took that jacket in there. And the doctors mocked us. The nurses mocked us. And he said, he said well, what you've been doing hadn't done anything. So he put that jacket on her. Her organs came alive, and she's completely made whole. The doctor said the organs, there's no way the organs could go from that point and turn around. So there's a, an attrition that happens in them. He said they came alive. And that guy's in our church. I, I wave to him every time I, I go see him. I said, isn't that cool? Laying hands on a jacket, God's power, yeah, yeah. God's life, surcharging that to where it would heal somebody. I can tell you stories all night. Just amazing. A little, a little young man had a word of knowledge. Uh, I had a word of knowledge in Lubbock, Texas, that somebody had the, the wire and their brain messed up. And this, this young man was in special ed class. He wasn't there, so he laid hands on the cloth. The pastor's name is Bracken Christian. Ten years later, I'm walking in that church. This young man walked up, senior in high school. He said, I was in special ed class. My parents brought a cloth on that you laid hands on. And he went right into normal class, graduated in high school, perfectly whole. And it's something he'll fix anything. Yes. I mean, it's amazing how we've, we've so amplified things maybe greater than he is, but man, there's nothing too hard for him. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. And when you get into end time things, even preaching on that, it buoys your faith because you see how flawless God is. Amen. It's amazing. And it's sometimes word of faith people have to be reminded that he honors his word. Because we all have faith. He said, we just need to know how to get it operated. You, Jesus said, if you had faith in the seed, you'd say. You could have a small amount of faith, but if you plant it, it'll grow up and it'll become. Yeah. People keep saying, I want great faith. You already do have great faith. Mm. How many of you can give God glory for his promises? Yeah, amen. That's pretty glory easy, God. isn't it? Amen. How many of you can give him glory? Uh, that, how many believe that he's fully persuaded that what he's able to perform? Yeah. 
The Bible calls that strong faith. <laughs> Amen. So you're strong in faith. Amen. He is the strength of your life. He never told you to be strong. He said be strong in the Lord. Oh, let me say that again. Is everybody awake? Everybody with me? He said be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. He's pretty mighty. He's pretty mighty. To the point there's no need for the Son because of the glory that's in His face. Hallelujah. I mean, that's, that's some wattage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. No need for the Son because of the glory that's in His face outshines the sun. Wow. Giddy up. Amen, amen. That'll preach a little bit, won't it? I'll come preach to you, buddy. I'm glad you came tonight, bud. All right, here we go. All right, hey, can I, can I get a music stand to preach down here or that? Does it matter? What, it doesn't. Uh, I'll, let me do this with the waters. So you don't. Oh, look at this, man. Fancy. All right, come on, Nathan. He's going to clean and jerk it and then spin it and throw it and zip it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, grab your Bibles and let's get right back in where we were. Let's thank Jesus for a minute. There's something about magnifying Jesus. It pleased the Father that in Him, Jesus, would all fullness dwell. Amen. Lord Jesus, You gave Your life for us. Hallelujah. You died for us. We've gathered on Sunday night, so Father, you, we, we love You. You have hungry people here tonight that love You. Jesus, thank You, thank You, thank You for giving Your life. Yes, we magnify and honor and lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we thank You for Your goodness and Your mercy and Your kindness. And Lord, we thank You for super supernatural uh, utterance and revelation tonight and insight into your plan in these last days that father we would walk in full stride doing the will of God I thank you for for using every person in this room father this season is how to get the power through you not just to you so use them use them mightily in this hour to represent the son of God may the resurrection be displayed in all of their lives we thank you for it we thank you for great boldness for every person that's in this room to do your will. I thank you, Father. I thank you for a new walk for the believer, a new walk of boldness, a new walk of daringness, a new walk of righteousness, to know who they are in Christ and to access a throne rights in this earth. We thank you for it. And Lord, as we approach these truths, we thank you that it will be illuminated in our hearts and minds how, how great you are. We magnify you. We glorify you. Yes. We thank you for being so good to us, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, oh. and everybody said amen. Amen. Grab your Bibles. Go there to Luke. Go to Luke 21. We'll pick up where we left off, and we'll just see what direction we go. What did we get into this morning? Anybody remember? End times, right, okay. Uh, how do we know we're living in the last days? The Bible says when Jesus came to us, He spoke to us in the last days. The Bible said well, the Holy Spirit was poured out, that was the last days. So we know we're living in the last of the last days. And we went through about seven or eight of the signs this morning to show us, Jesus said, if you see two of these, you're living in the last days. Yeah. He said you could see and you could know. Kenneth Hagin prophesied years ago, there'd be a spirit of seeing and a spirit of knowing on the church. Where'd it come from? It came from that verse that we read this morning. What is that talking about? When Israel is made a nation, the fig tree budded in 48, it's so blatant you could see and you could know. Yeah. You don't have to even be told that. You go, wow, summer's here. So harvest is here. So great changes are happening right now. I mean, I do this update. I didn't talk about it this morning. I do an end of days update every Wednesday on, on the website. And last week, 55 nations watched it and 15,000 people watched it. I first did it for a couple months. I thought, man, nobody's going to watch this thing. And then they told me so many people were watching it because people want to know. So what I do is I tell people what's happened this week. Like this week, China uh, exported m some missiles to Iran that have a range of 4,000 miles. And I go, I go and talk about how I Russia, Iran, and all these nations that have gone through an Arab Spring, they're wanting to attack Israel again, just like they did in 1948, just like they did in 1960 just like they did in 73. So those nations have gone through a change because they want to annihilate Israel. If you'll notice, right when the Israel was made a nation in 48, hang with me, I'm going to get to my message here in just a second, that Hitler killed 6 million Jews. Satan thought he could stop God's word from coming to pass, so he killed 6 million Jews. But God's word is so powerful, they still were made a nation. I mean, think about Hitler. His book was called Mein Kemp. It means my struggle. You know what that word is? Jihad. Same word. You hear, that, you hear that a lot these days because of what's going on. But it's that same mentality. And Ajinadad in Iran believes that he'll usher in his Messiah, the 12th Iman, if he goes to war with Israel. 
And this is what he said. He says, the twelfth Iman will come and reign for seven years, and he'll kill all the Christians and all the Jews, and Jesus will come back with him and say, I'm not the Son of God. So see that spirit that's, that's at work right now in Iran. That's why Iran wants nuclear weapons. So uh, there's so much going on about things are setting up for the Ezekiel 38 war. And I get into that every week, and I'm, I'm not going to get into that part tonight because I want to get into some other stuff. But man, we are living in the deal. This is it. You say, could, re could we really be living real close to the Lord's coming back? Well, I gave you the signs this morning. Israel made a nation in 48. Jerusalem won back in 67. Hebrew language restored. Wow. Ethiopian Jews brought back. Fertility of the land of Israel. Revival of the Roman Empire. There's a whole, a whole lot more. Uh, the, the oil of anointing was found where the Dead Sea Scrolls are. They have to have that. Red Heifer was, was born there on the land. The Temple Mount Institute was, was uh, established to where they're ready. The moment we're raptured, they're going to start having sacrifices again. They been going, guys been going to school. Their last name is Cohen, means priest. They've been getting their priestly garments already because God owes them seven years of Old Testament time back. And it'll pick up just like Old Covenant time. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. But before we get, what we're going to get into tonight, I'm going to skip over a few things, but let's go through the order. We're going to be raptured soon. Yes. A lot of people don't like the rapture doctrine, but we are going to be raptured. We're going to be caught up. Enoch was raptured. Elijah was raptured. Yeah. Jesus was raptured. Wow. And we will be raptured. We shall be changed. This mortal will put on immortality. Hallelujah. Won't it be wonderful? Never to get tired again. Hallelujah. Hey, we're, we're quickened right now by His Spirit, but it will be wonderful to have a glorified body. I can't wait to walk through walls. Hallelujah. That'll be cool. You know, I like to play jokes on people. I can't imagine being able to play that many jokes. Boof, hello. I mean, if I was the Lord, I really would have messed with them, you know. But uh, we'll have that glorified body. So I'm skipping over two main events. To, I want to preach on something a little bit further ahead. But we know we're about to be raptured. And the, the next appointment for your life is the reward seat of Christ after the rapture. It's not the judgment seat of Christ. It's the reward seat. It's the Bema. You get rewarded for what you did while you're on the earth. Your sin will not be judged. Sin was already laid on Jesus. But you will get rewards for what you did with the right motive. And for the wrong motive, it'll be wood, hay, and stubble. The right motive will be gold, silver, and precious stones. You'll be clothed in the millennium indicative to how faithful you were in this dispensation. And you don't want to be wearing some speedo bathing suit during the millennium. Amen? <laughs> you want some robes. Hallelujah. You want to be clothed with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So that's next. But I want to pick up with the next event. So go to Luke 21, and then we're going to run over to Matthew 24. Everybody, everybody still glad you came? Come on. Yeah. All right, look at Luke 21. If you've got your Bibles there, turn with me to Luke 21 and uh, verse 24. We got into this this morning, but I want to pick up and go way forward. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Luke 21, verse 24. And shall be led away captive unto all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, that happened in 67. Pretty amazing. We talked about that this morning. Verse 29. He spake to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer a harvest is nigh at hand. Likewise, or in the same manner, as exact as that is, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all is fulfilled. That's awesome. Heaven and earth shall pass away or be altered, but my words shall not be altered. Now I want you to look at verse 36. This is a cool verse here to bless you, to show you how he's talking to Jewish boys here that aren't saved yet. So look what he says in verse 36. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now I don't have to pray to be accounted worthy. I am worthy. I'm righteous. Notice how the tone changes from the Gospels to the Epistles. Oh, yeah. In the Epistles, as He is, so are we. In the Epistles, <laughs> I've been made this way. I'm not trying to get righteous. I am righteous. Right. Technically, I'm not forgiven. I'm justified. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big difference. Right. You can be forgiven of something, but man, I'm, I'm holy. That's right. I'm just as holy tonight as I'm ever going to be. You know what holy means? It means separate. You don't separate yourself to get holy. You separate yourself because you are holy. Yes. And there's not one thing in the flesh you can do to get holy. It's His blood. He gets all the glory all the honor and all the praise. It's good to live a holy life, but that doesn't make you any more holy. You had to have something happen in your spirit called the righteousness of God go into you and remake you in His image. Wow. So I have God's DNA and RNA on the inside of me. Woo, hallelujah. I can look in the devil in the face and I can mock him. I can go, la, 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 because the greater one's on the inside of me. Amen? So with that, you, end time preaching is a whole lot better when you find out you already qualify. I don't have to pray to be accounted worthy. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Because remember, he's talking to Jewish boys about what? The second coming. Talking about the rapture. He said, hey, I show you a mystery. 
You'll not all sleep, but you'll all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet will sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We'll be caught up. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen, amen. So rapture, after that reward seat, got into that. And while that's happening, the tribulation, we're not going to get into all that tonight, but that seven-year period, wow, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And I could preach on something that I could show you in Daniel 9. He showed you why you can't be here during the tribulation. Precise and exact. I've heard people go, well, no, we might be, have to be part of it. Well, go to Daniel 9, and it'll show you how you can't be here during that time. Very precise, very exact, no guesswork. It gets quiet when you say that, but it don't matter. <laughs> Amen. It gets real. It gets real quiet. Amen. It's, uh, it's good news. I don't have to tribulate. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people making money right now over fear. You better buy up all this stuff. Better get ready. No, there, there's no. There's no bad thing for the Christian. The only time in the Book of Acts when there's a drought coming, the Holy Ghost warned them through a prophet. Yep. Yeah, I told him there was a drought coming. The Holy Ghost will tell you what's coming. Yes, he, he said he will announce and declare things to come. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. But I want to skip over to the next event, the grand event. We're going to get into two grand events tonight. We'll do it in a short period of time. The grandest event ever is Jesus coming back to the planet. Yeah. We're going to get into the second coming for just a couple of minutes, then we're going to get into the millennium, because I want you to see a little bit about the millennium to see what God's invested in you right now. He's put so much strength in you right now that you really don't realize how strong strong you are and you probably get into the next dispensation. Because he's put such an investment in you that tonight you know you're righteous. Tonight you know you know the word of God. I mean you can you can quote Mark 11, 23 and 24. We I went to Brother Hagin's meetings in 1970. I wasn't that excited about hearing Brother Hagin speak because he was so boring. He'd go, he turned his Bible every service, turn to Mark 11, 23, and I'd go, Oh my God. He's gonna <laughs> preach the same service. But I didn't care. But my mom would go, We're gonna go halfway across the country to hear Kenneth Hagin. I would do anything to get out of school. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I can get out of school, I'm gonna hear Brother Hagin. But it took it took years of him teaching you have what you say. You have what you say. You, you, you are what you say. Oh, yeah. What you say is headed your way. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. Those three words of say in Mark 11, 23. Number one means authority. Number two means you're on the earth. Number three is Legos, building block. Everything you say, you're building. You're building for your future. Just like God made the worlds, you're making your world. Yeah. Amen. So, so we've had that hammered into us so that we would be a, a group of people right here before the coming of the Lord that would, that would be just like Daniel prophesied about. We'd know our God, we'd be strong, and we'd do exploits. A lot of people know the Word of God, but not the God of the Word. You get to know the God of the Word, and, and you laugh in the face of impossibility. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen. 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 I'll, I'll tell you this story. We've got to go to Matthew 24. I'm going a little bit everywhere. Go to Matthew 24. I ran over Colleen. I don't know if I'd done that last time I was here. I think you've probably heard the story of me telling it in Mount Rocky Mount. We were at Winter Bible a couple years ago. and went over to some people's house. Um, Joe Dunnick's house for a party for uh, John and Michelle's son, Zach, my little nephew. And we pulled in the circle drive, and I told Lauren, uh, my daughter, and my wife, Colleen, to get out of the van to go in the house that way. And they didn't. They went in this other door, and I didn't see them. And there were cars in front of me, so I had to back out of the circle drive. Well, I looked over like that to see who was behind me, and there was nobody behind me. I pulled over and ran over Colleen's leg. The car went up Colleen's uh, ankle and calf, rode all the way up her leg. She lays on the ground screaming. I, of course, pulled off of her leg. <laughs> she, man, I heard her screaming. I knew exactly what it was. I ran over my wife. I, got, I, 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 get, out of the, I get out of the car, and uh, Lauren's standing there looking at Colleen like that, and I walked over to Colleen. Now, what? This is why you've got this investment before Jesus comes. I walk over to Colleen. I said, I command you to be healed right now in Jesus' name. I said, get up. She looked at me like, are you crazy? You just ran over me. She, she goes, I mean, that look is like, what, are, are you nuts? I said, get up. I grabbed her just like that, picked her up like that. You could feel the power of God go up and down her body just like a heater. She goes, oh, my God, this is real. We, we stood there for a minute. Little kids were kind of standing around because they had seen her screaming, just screaming. Instantly, she's healed. We walk into the party, and uh, uh, how's it going? Good. And I'm thinking, I just ran over my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> I, I flew to Daytona, preached. Colleen flew back to California. She was walking the neighborhood, jogging, then jogging, and running the neighborhood. Had, didn't have any pain after, after being run over by the car. So this is why you don't think, no impossibility. This is absolute. It doesn't maybe work. It works, period. Amen. You don't get saved and go, hmm, I wonder if that took. But that's how people treat the rest of the Word of God. Because uh -huh. you're taught so well in salvation. Yeah. You should be just as bold about everything else in your inheritance. 
You're right. Amen. Amen. So, with that said, right here before his return, he has a flavor he wants. Woo, hallelujah. Because he's about to come back to the planet. So go to Matthew 24, and let's get into these things, because I want you to see what we're going to function in, and man, it'll bless you about your future. Matthew 24, here's the big event. Matt, you got your Bibles there? Yeah. All right, Matthew 24, look at verse 27. Here's the big event. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. So it's going to be pretty dramatic, like lightning. Yeah. Immediately after the tribulation, this is verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and shall they'll see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. Now this is going to be the coolest event because we come back with him on horses. Now I've ridden horses, but I like motorcycles better because I can tell my motorcycle what to do better than a horse. I've never uh, you know, horses, I grew up, I, I was basically there to clean up. You understand what I'm saying? To clean the barn. But, this is the cool thing. You're going to fly on a horse. I mean, I don't know what the deal is with that. You know, I've flown airplanes before, but I ain't never flown a horse. I mean, what do you do? Lean left. Here we go. Come on, Trigger. We, 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 got, a little, we got, a little, got a little deal here. What if an event this is going to be that people at the end of the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to look like he's going to destroy Israel. The yoke is going to be on their neck. The Antichrist will be right there on them, and he'll remove that burden from off their shoulder with the brightness of his coming. Yeah. No negotiation. Right. The King of kings and Lord of lords says with the brightness of His coming, the, the Antichrist will be annihilated. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and you carry that anointing with you everywhere you go. You have this treasure in earth and vessels. Yeah. Woo! What a view, though. They're going to look up, and they're not only going to see Jesus, they're going to see all these horses flying down toward the planet with you on it. Yeah. The armies of heaven, hallelujah, coming with Jesus. Wow, what a... Man, that's going to be a trip. That would be, be good to have some video of that deal. Amen. Yeah. So watch what happens here at the second coming. I want us to get this. Because at the second coming, Jesus bodily comes back to the earth. Now watch what he does at the second coming. The wicked are taken off the earth. Okay? The, the people that made it through the tribulation, the wicked will be taken off, and the righteous, natural body people will be left. Now that's a big deal, because everybody on TV preaches out of this, and they don't get it right, but I want you to get it right, because he's going to leave the natural people on the earth to replenish and repopulate the earth. But the wicked will be taken off. That's where the wheat and the tares grow together. And at the end of the age, the angels are the reapers. They separate the wheat from the tares. So let's read this. Everybody, everybody with me there? I know I said that fast. Everybody with me? Yeah. All right, look what he says here in the next verse. Verse 31. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's not the rapture. This is at the second coming. The rapture's already happened seven years earlier. So he goes on and talks about what it looked like. Verse 36, But of that day and that hour no man knows. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So he's talking about the second coming here, not talking about the rapture. We have all the signs of the second coming, so we do know the day and the hour. He wasn't talking to the church. He's talking to Jewish boys here. Now why would he give us all these signs about his coming and then tell us we wouldn't know? Come on now. All the, there's no sign for the rapture, but there's tons of signs for the second coming. So we have a sense of the timing of it based on everything happening in our generation. No other generations had what I talked about this morning and a little bit tonight. No other generation has had Israel made a nation. Jerusalem won back. The Hebrew language restored. All those. That's indicative of our time. Why would Jesus say, look at the fig tree? Because he wants you to know what time it is. So go down a little further. He gives you a little bit about what the climate is in verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just corruption and violence. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came, took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now this is what's crazy. They've gone through seven years of signs. You have an asteroid hit the earth called Wormwood. It destroys a third of the waters because it's radioactive. I've preached on this in Russia. It's the word Chernobyl. Okay? So, so all this has happened and still people are eating and drinking and marrying. You have nuclear war. A third, a two billion people killed with nuclear war and people are still going, hey, let's go out and let's get married. Let's go date. So it's amazing how people still want to continue on as life as usual in the midst of all kinds of hell happening. I mean, two billion people will be killed. One-third of all men will be killed during that time. 
I mean, that's going to be a bad time. Thank God we're in heaven. Okay? Okay, now let's look, look, at, the next, look at the next verse here. I want to get moving and get to what I want to get to, but just hang with me. Verse 40, Then two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other left. That's not the rapture, that's at the second coming. The wicked are taken off the earth, and the natural-bodied righteous people that made it through the latter part of the tribulation, he leaves those righteous ones on the earth, and he explains it here in just a second. Next verse. Verse 44, 41, Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, and the other left. So he's talking about here, those wicked are taken off, and this is important for you and I. I know I'm belaboring this, but this is going to be your duty during the millennium. You'll be preaching to those natural-bodied people that have children, and when they reach the age of accountability, you'll go, hey, there he is right there. You need to get born again. We believe when we hadn't even seen. They're going to they're gonna have the opportunity. You'll preach to them and go, by the way, you need to receive him. He's right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just the beginning. So everybody hang, everybody get, everybody get the squirrels going here. Get those brain, get the, everybody say caffeine. Come on now. Because you're going to have, you're going to have natural bodied people make it to the end of the tribulation that are, that are born again, that haven't been raptured. Uh -huh. Okay? And they will repopulate the earth. Wow. And those natural people are who you're going to rule over for a thousand years. Paul said, you're going to take a matter to court. No, you're not. You'll judge angels. means to rule over them. You'll rule the nations. Yeah. We'll get into all that in a minute here, so see that you'll see why you've had the investment right now. He's put the word in you that even though you haven't physically seen God, you trust Him, you take Him at His word. Yes. Whereas they'll be able to see Him, you've learned faith even in a higher and greater way. So you'll know His voice even better than they will because you trusted His voice when you couldn't see Him. All right, let's keep moving. Boy, that, that gets some gears rolling there. Here we go. Woo! Let's go. Let's keep going, though, because this will explain what I just said better than I'm doing. Look at chapter 25. You got your Bibles there? Go to chapter 25. Chapter 25, verse 31. And when the Son of Man shall come in the glory with, uh, with all of His holy angels with Him, He shall sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations. And He shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on His left. Then shall the king say unto them, On the right hand come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. A lot of people use this verse about people not qualifying for heaven. This is the sheep and goat judgment. This has nothing to do with the church. This is when He's going to go, somehow God really likes a natural kingdom. So those natural people, He's going to go, Look, here's the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Wow. And the people that didn't treat Israel right during that time, the goat nations, they won't be here. I don't believe Iraq will be here. I mean, there may be people from Iraq that are born again that are here during that time, but nations that tried to destroy Israel, they won't be here. It's amazing how Germany's kind of repaired their thing they've done. Every house in Israel has something called Noah's Ark. It's a zip-up tent that has an oxygen system on the inside of it that you can't get nerve gas into it. Every house, the German government sent them down there to them to protect them in case of a, of a, of a gas attack or an attack from Syria or whoever else. So Germany's tried to sow to them and bless them. Amen. I've preached in Germany. I've preached in Germany with a Jewish man. You have never seen people cry when you see an Israeli preach in Germany and talk about the goodness of God and how God leads man to repentance. For all those Germans, man, they're like, ooh, this ain't cool because they killed six million Jews. And you know what's amazing? Watch this. During the church age, they killed six million Jews and prospered. See, everybody goes, right now, God's judging America. No, when God judges things, you really can't find it anymore. Sodom and, yeah. Sodom, <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah is toast. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, cause I, man, I hear that on TV all the time. Well, it's all, it all sounds good. It sells a lot of books. Oh, God's judging this and judging that. Well, he's going to need to apologize because Germany killed 6 million Jews and they prospered. Mm -hmm. and, and people go, well, New Orleans, Katrina was judgment. Well, there's still people living in New Orleans. Oh. He, didn't do, he didn't do a very good job then, did he? <laughs> <laughs> so that's all religion. But boy, oh yeah, oh, don't get me going on that. Hang with me. Okay, this is the sheep and goat judgment. This is setting you up for why I'm going to preach on the millennium for a minute, because you have to see who you're going to be ministering to. Natural people that make it through the latter part of the tribulation, they're going to be having children, and you're going to be in a glorified body ruling and reigning over them. Hallelujah. Because see, there's a whole other realm. Right here, when Jesus comes back, He's going to come down on the Mount of Olives. Wow. He's going to come down on that Mount of Olives and, and Satan wants that spot. One time I was in Israel 
and I had a, a tour I took with me and I was meeting up with another tour and uh, we were in the Garden of Gethsemane. Man, I'm in the Garden of Gethsemane looking up at the Temple Mount wall and I'm thinking, man, this is right where Jesus was. I mean, this is the olive press where he felt that pressure. Well, amazing that he's right there. Everything preaches, man. The pressure of sin going to be put on him. And he's in that olive press right there. And uh, then all of a sudden the lady said, hey, I want you to teach, uh, do communion here in a minute. And I was like, oh, holy cow, I don't have my, my Bible. I had a different Bible with me. I thought, where are the communion verses? I started panicking, you know. Because here i got to preach in front of all these people and I don't know where my communion verses are. Of course, I know 1 Corinthians 11 right now because I don't have to do it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of freaking out, you know. So, so all of a sudden I had an open vision. Now watch this over Jerusalem. I had an open vision. I saw, I saw angels and demons all over the Temple Mount. It looked like the most congested area. You just know this. It, it's called discerning of spirits. I saw angels and demons all, all over the Temple Mount. Just supernaturally busy right there. I told the pastor I was with, Tom DeMont. I said, dude, I just had an open vision. I saw angels and demons all over the Temple, the most congested area. He said, buddy, you better come back to earth. You've got to do communion here in a second. You know, you know, he's messing with me. How your friends are? They mess with me. <laughs> Well, the next thing the lady said, Billy Brim, she goes like this. She said, you know, uh, she was getting ready for me to do the communion. She said an old prayer named Phil Halverson was standing right here and looked up over the Temple Mount and had an open vision. He said, he said, saw angels and demons all over the Temple Mount and said it's the most active area of angels and demons on the whole planet. You know what it is? It's Jacob's Ladder. Okay, that's right where Jerusalem means plural. You've got the earthly and you've got the heavenly. And we think of some old rickety ladder, you know, Jacob crawling up like that. I go back to my office in Tulsa and I had an etching on the wall that I hadn't even paid attention to. It was of Jacob's ladder. It was a huge stairway of angels going up and down. It's kind of sad that Led Zeppelin figured it out. It's called a stairway to heaven. Uh -huh. Isn't that sad? That their song, Stairway to Heaven, everybody talks about how demonic it is, but that's exactly what is in that etching, what someone saw. Yeah. See, there's a realm that's real. Why do I say that? During the millennium, you'll be going back and forth in your glorified body just like angels do now. Wow. See, we have a dual race right now. This room is filled with angels. Doesn't mean you don't, you don't, just because you don't see them don't mean they're not here. Yeah, right, right. So during that time, you'll be ruling like that. So we're going to keep moving and get into that because there's some cool things that you'll see that you're tasting of the powers of the world to come. And you'll see how smart the Lord is. He just, he just loves you so much. He just wants to strengthen you, wants to bless you. Wow, He so quickened you and made you just like Him. When we get there and we see the throne, we'll go, wow, how could we have missed how great He is? Wow. But you know what? Right now, you're, you're a mobile throne. Amen. God likes mobile homes. Amen. Come on. <laughs> but seriously, folks, I'll be here all week. Here we go. All right. Try the veal. Don't forget to tip your waitress. All right. Here we go. Go over to, <laughs> let's keep moving here. That's the sheep and goat judgment. Go to Revelation. There's a lot more you could get into there. But you understand at the second coming, you've got natural body people that Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats so they'll repopulate the earth. Go to Revelation 19. We've got to keep moving here. For Revelation 19. Everybody still glad you came? Amen. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Revelation 19. Look at another view. If you want to get a really good view of the second coming, read a little bit of Isaiah. Read a little bit of Joel. Read a little bit of Habakkuk. Read a little bit of uh, Z Zechariah. has got some cool views. You remember Raiders of the Lost Ark? You know, at the end where, the, where they had the Ark of the Covenant there and they were trying to mess with it and all of a sudden the power came out and melted their faces. Yeah. I mean, it was a little, little goofy, but they got that from the Bible. That's what it says that happens in Zechariah. Their faces will melt off of them. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's kind of wild that, that there is no new thing under the sun. It's all right there. Amen? Amen. Well, let's keep moving now. Let's go to Revelation 19. So th those are wonderful pictures here. This one I like. Look at Revelation 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open. Behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called faithful and true. Wow. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Wow. And the armies which were with him in heaven, that's us, followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. And he'll rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress of the fierce and the wrath of Almighty God. Wow, I like to say it right here, the boss is coming back, amen? I mean, you know, you think about it, he came so much of the first time in such humility that he's born in a manger, a stable. God himself born in a stable. And this time, I mean, you think about all the years where he's blamed for every bad thing that's happened, and he's only good. He's only, only good, every perfect gift from above. Wow, just amazing how Satan has so perverted all that. But here you see Jesus coming back in glory. Every eye will see Him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. 
that He's Lord. I believe He's so looking forward to being back with everyone all together. Hallelujah. There's something about Jerusalem. It's just amazing how He likes that place. The capital. Wow. For a thousand years, then He's going to move heaven down to earth. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen, amen. All right, let's keep moving. Skip over, if you would, to chapter 20, and let's look a little further, because I want to get to the money. It's just taking me a little while to get there. Look at chapter 20, look at verse 1. He says, And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, bound him a thousand years. I like this. One angel will take him and bind him. Not a legion, not a team. One. One created being will take the devil and, 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 will, and will bind him. Verse 3, will cast him into the bottomless pit, shut him up, set a seal on him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed for a little season. So at that point is when the millennial reign of Christ starts. So you have a thousand years of those natural people having children that are going to live to a thousand years. Longevity will be restored. It'll be just like it was before the flood. I mean, it's going to be amazing. So during that thousand years, won't it be cool? Jesus on TV. It'll, I believe the Andy Griffin show will have Moses, Elijah. What's up, Mose? What's up, Ange? I mean, it'll be kind of cool. <laughs> you turn on CNN, it'll be Jesus. Turn on, turn on Fox. And, and, and you, how, why is Law and Order such a show that's, that people like? Why do they like uh, NCIS? We like righteousness. We don't want the person that committed a crime to get away with it. And during that thousand years, even with the devil bound, people in natural bodies will do some stupid things. That's why you have to judge and rule over them. Mm. So there's going to be a lot of that stuff happening that we hadn't thought about. And this is the, this is the blueprint for it that, man, I know I'm, I'm getting some gears moving, but hang with me. The Bible talks about principalities and powers, okay, in this, in this present life right now. Principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, okay, wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Now what is that? That's the devil copying God's plan for the millennium. Hmm. See, you'll have a sphere of influence. Now, get with me now. Yeah. If you're faithful over so much, you'll rule over one city. Faithful over so much, you'll rule over ten cities. Yeah. So you'll have a sphere of influence of rulership over those cities. But won't it be wonderful during that thousand years? Righteousness will reign. The movies that'll come out will be the coolest movies. Yeah. <laughs> look at Solomon. I mean, it'll be, it'll be it'll all... Look at how David did this. It'll be the coolest thing. And peace will reign for a thousand years. The Prince of Peace, when he comes back to the earth, it'll just be wonderful. So let's go back and look at the atmosphere here in a minute so you can see why God's invested all of this in you. hundred years ago, nobody knew who they were in Christ. John Wesley said, give me ten men that hate sin and love God, and I'll change the world. He had that revelation, but if you said, are you righteous? He'd go, I don't know. Hmm. He'd go, I'm trying. Do you know the same? You know, who we, we are that generation that know we're Him yeah. as He is. So are we in this world. That's why you'll have boldness in the day of judgment. I'm not trying to be like Him. I'm born like Him. Yeah. Just just like most people, I've said this in this church so many times, you know, we're, we're male and female. If you don't know what you are, we'll pray for you after the service, but I know exactly what I am. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a male. I don't question that. Just as you don't question that, you shouldn't question who you are in Christ. Great. I mean, do you wake up in the morning, am I a girl, my boy? Hello, you know what you are. But when it comes to who they are in Christ, you're just as much like Him as you are male or female. Let me say that again. You're just as much like Him as you are male or female. Yeah. You're not trying to be like Him. You're born that way. You're born a woman. You're born a man. And when Jesus comes into you and you're born again, you're made in the likeness of God. Yeah. And we know that. So this is what we're gonna, our future is for that thousand years. It's going to be cool. Go back to Isaiah. There's so much I want to get into, so just run with me a little bit. Isaiah. I know we're not going to go all night because I used to go to John Osteen's church. In 1970, 71, 72, and he said, He who preaches short shall be heard again. Amen. Yeah. So I, I want you to come back. Amen. I, I don't receive that. I want you to come back. I want you to come back. Go to uh, Isaiah 11. <laughs> Isaiah 11. These are some cool verses because it gives you a glimpse of what we have for our future. And, and if, I, if I have something that I'm guessing about, because there's certain things that you just don't know all the details. Like years ago, I prophesied that uh, Diane Sawyer will, will preach the gospel on a, on a Friday night, and it'll be awesome, on national TV. I remember prophesying that about 10, 15 years ago. All of a sudden, I'm watching TV, and she's interviewing Mel Gibson, and she goes, so you're saying Jesus paid the penalty for Adam's sin. 
And she began to talk about how Jesus was the substitute for what Adam did wrong. And a friend of mine goes, you remember prophesying that? I mean, I said, holy cow, I remember saying that 10 years ago. Well, I thought she would have gone, I tell you in the last days. Uh, you know, we, 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 we all think it's going to be that way. So when we get into these things, if I, if I have to guess, I'll go, now I'm guessing on this, but most of the stuff is exact and precise. We just don't hear a lot of preaching on it. But if you find out what's coming, it'll make you bold now. Yeah. Because you might as well learn how to get in this stuff now rather than wait till you get to heaven. Right. So you think about yielding to the Holy Ghost now, much less when you have a glorified body and when there's no resistance. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. All right, Isaiah 11. You got your Bibles there? Page uh, 785 if you got a Bible like mine. Amen. Isaiah 11, look at verse... I'll skip down to verse 6. There's so much here, it's so good. The wolf will dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion, the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. You'll have a lion on a leash. You go to the park and there's a kid got a lion. Go, come on, let's cruise. So nature is altered. The millennial reign of Christ, you see a child out there. I'm going to have me a pet lion, man. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to go, come on, boys, let's go to the park. A child has a lion. I mean, that's just almost going to freak our brains out that this is the way it's supposed to be. Dominion. Peace. No beast. Notice it's called the mark of the beast. A beast kills something with no remorse. And here you'll see even nature's altered because of Jesus, the author of life. Read a little bit more there. Look at the next verse. And they, in verse number 8, And a suckling child shall play in the hole of an asp, and a weaned child shall put his hand in the cock trice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So nature's altered right there at the beginning of that thousand years. It is going to be cool to see what things are going to be like. So skip over to Isaiah. Let's see where we want to go. Isaiah 30, I believe it is, or 26. This is cool. You can see what, uh, what nature is going to be like. When you've got animals like that, we're going to get to the good part here in just a minute. There's some parts here that are, that are just so, so good. Look at Isaiah 30, and this will give you an idea of what nature is going to be like as well. Moreover, Isaiah 30, verse 26, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. And the day the Lord binds up the breach of His people and heals the stroke of their wound. So the nighttime will be like our day. That just shows you how dark it is right now. Daytime will be seven times brighter. Won't that be cool? You can play golf at night. That will be awesome, man. I know what I'm going to do in the millennium. I'm going to play 18 holes at St. Andrews. I'm going to be translated to Augusta, play 18 holes. Then I'm going to be translated to Pebble, play 18 holes. Then I'm going to be translated to Hawaii, play 18 holes. And I'm going to come back to St. Andrews. I'm going to circle the globe. <laughs> Woo! With a thrill of victory and no agony of defeat. Amen? Come on, man. I'm, I'm in, buddy. You think you, some people go, you think we'll have, uh, we'll have a, an appetite for stuff like that? Well, you're not going to become a robot when you get your glorified body. Now, sports may take on a whole different uh, you know, desire in our heart, but you're not going to get to heaven. I'm so glad to be here, Lord. You are my father. <laughs> no, he, he made you so different. Look around the room. He made us all different, which is a miracle in itself that the muscles in your eyes, nobody else has the same muscles in the eyes as you do. Nobody. Your eyes do more calculations in a second than all the computers stacked together. Yeah. Read it, man. It's unreal. God's awesome. Ooh, hallelujah. We ought to talk about that star stuff. That freaks people out. Let's keep moving here. Here we go. Let's go on to... That's, that's nature. It'll be just like before the flood. Obviously, photosynthesis will be better because plant life, all the sun, so you have oxygen, so people live longer. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. Daddy won't take the T-bird away. Okay. Amen. Skip over to Isaiah 60-something. Here, go over there. You, you pick out the chapter. We'll see if you're flowing. Come on. Isaiah chapter 60, let's look at a few verses. It's so good because we got this weird idea about what it's going to be like. It's going to be very natural and people are going to be rebuilding things and having houses and jobs and all that. The natural people are and you'll be overseeing them in glorified bodies. Now this, I'm going to guess on this one. Okay, you ready? John 14, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were so, not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am there, you may be also. I believe you'll be living in your house in heaven and commuting back and forth to earth, just like angels do right now. Yeah. Remember what Jesus said about angels? They do always behold the face of my father for these kids. So they can before, before, be before the father back down on the earth faster than you can even think. So the commute's going to be kind of cool. <laughs> like, I think I'll go to Africa. Poof, you're in Africa. Hallelujah. But look what he says here in Isaiah 60. Let's look at some verses. Skip down to verse... Well, there's so much I'm, I'm just trying to edit as I go. Go to verse, go to verse uh, 21. 1 
Verse 21, Thy people also shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in my time. So there's going to be people having kids, building and planting, and you're going to be preaching to those people when they reach the age of accountability. They're going to be having services. I'll show you about church here in just a minute, but there's so much cool stuff here. Skip down to verse 4 of chapter 61. Let's look a little further. I'm just giving you bits and pieces, but I want you to put the puzzle together as we go. Chapter 61, verse 4. And they shall build up the old waste places, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they will repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. I can tell you right now what Russia is going to do the first hundred years of the millennium. They're going to get some Clorox, and they're going to get some uh, uh, something to clean that country. You know what I'm saying? So the first hundred years, they're going to be rebuilding what was damaged at the latter part of the tribulation because of all the nuclear war. So it's not... See, we think of it like bewitched. We think the Lord's going to stand here and go... Doo -doo, like He's going to wiggle His nose, and all of a sudden the whole earth going to be like that. No, people will naturally build and plant. He likes that. You get to put the work of your hands to it. Now those natural people will be doing that while you're preaching to their kids and overseeing and judging and ruling and reigning. It'll be very, very cool. Let's look at church for a second. You say we have church during the millennium? Oh yeah. You say we have tithing during the millennium? Absolutely. It's going to run the whole government. Yeah. Amen. It's not going away. Well, everybody gets quiet and say that. Woo! I'll do Elvis right there. Preacher Brother Joe, it's all over you. Here we go. Come on, man. <laughs> go to uh, Zechariah. Find Zacharias right before Malachi. This will bless you. Look, let's look at church. Look at church. Wait till you see. You'll, 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 you'll be shocked at how blessed we are on the church age. Look at Zechariah 14. If you can find it. I know they'll probably put it up there on the board. That, that brother's so fast. God bless you, buddy. Zechariah 14. Oh, there's so much cool stuff. I want you to get there, so run with me. Zechariah 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came up against Jerusalem. So see, there'll be some natural body people left that came up against Jerusalem, all right? So they're still here on the earth. Watch what happens here. He said, They shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now watch this. It shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up, they come not, that they'll have no rain. There shall be, watch this, the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite the heathen. The unbeliever will say it's not worth it to go to church. You think it's tough when Pastor Ed goes, man, you need to come hear the Word. The Lord's going to go, hey, you don't have to come to church. You don't come to church, don't get any rain, don't get any rain, don't get any food. <laughs> wow, kind of bizarre. <laughs> I mean, but thank God we live, in the, we live in the dispensation of the church age, dispensation of grace. Uh, thank God. So here God's going to make those natural people, you need to come to church so you can have some rain. Because why, why would He want you to come to church? He's not an egomaniac in His presence, His fullness of joy. Yeah. There's a joy that you can experience that you can't experience other than being in His presence. You can have joy, but in His presence is fullness of joy. Indicating you can have levels of joy. And buddy, I'm going to tell you, it, it gets to the point where you're so giddy, you, you don't even know how to worry. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, true. Amen. That doesn't mean I haven't gone through anything. I've gone through more hell. And the one guy that tried to match me on that, I was talking, preaching on being bold, tried to, tried to match me, got down front, got on his knees and wept. I said, oh, you don't think I've been through any hell? I can match you hell for hell after the service. The guy came down got in the front with me, got on his knees and wept after I told him what I'd been through. So I don't, don't magnify what I go through. I magnify what Jesus did. Yeah. See, our whole, our whole society is a victim mentality. We're not victims. We're victors. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you get in His presence and there's joy. And thank God you get to do that before you get there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You have access. You have access to the throne of God. Come boldly. Wow. Mm, mm. So that's church. You go once a year. If you don't go, you don't get any rain. How cool is that? Wow. Won't that be interesting? Time to go to Jerusalem. Let's go, man. Let's, let's hook it up. All right, let's go back to Isaiah. I want to go back there for a minute. I'm getting to the part that I want to get to, and we'll close in here in just a second. This is the good part. And we're going to sing something off our Greatest Hits album. Hit CD number 7, and we'll hit that one. Here we go. Go to Isaiah 65, and this is why I'm, I'm preaching on this tonight to get you ready for what your job description is. Isaiah 65. Look at, look at Isaiah 65. All right, look at verse... Well, oh, there's so much, but go down to verse... Verse 20. There shall be no more... Isaiah 65, verse 20. There shall be no more than an infant of days, nor an old man that not fulfilled his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner, uh, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. Okay, so the natural person that's a sinner, he can die at a hundred years old. 
but the, the natural sinner will not die at 100 years old. Maybe he's doing stupid jumps on his motorcycle. Like this, Let's say a saint is jumping on his motorcycle, okay? Natural body, born again person that you've preached to after he's reached the age of accountability. He's doing jumps on his motorcycle. Used to, they just did motocross. Now they're doing flips and everything. Maybe he does one and, and makes a mistake and breaks his neck. A glorified saint walks over and says, no, not in this dispensation. Rise up and walk. It's in you to raise people up. See, you are tasting of the power. See, like I prayed over Colleen, raised her up, she's run over by a car. In the next dispensation, someone does something stupid and dies, and they're a born-again person? Uh-uh, you're coming on back. Or they get injured? Watch this. Okay, the gifts of the Spirit are the power of the world to come, and the anointing. Now watch, hang with me. I was preaching out in California. I can't believe I got California stories tonight, but that's all right. The, uh, uh, Pastor Gary called it the land of the fruits, nuts, and flakes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> granola Christian. Anyway, yeah. I'm preaching out in California a few years ago, and I had my daughter with me. Lauren was with me on this trip. And it's a friend of mine's church. And as we walked in, kind of to the back room, just like this, as we walked in, I had a vision. Now here's a word of knowledge in vision form. I saw a man look like Robert Redford, and he had his hands around the pastor's neck, just like this. And it was like he was over him, so his hands were upside down like that. And before the pastor came in, I told Lauren, I said, hey, there's a man here. He looks like Robert Redford. And he looks, he, he thinks he has more authority than the pastor. He thinks he's over him. And, and and he's got him around the throat just like that. No big deal. So uh, the pastor came in. I know him real well. I said, hey, dude. How you doing, man? Good to see you. I've preached some word many times. He said, good. I said, hey, man, there's a guy in your church looks like Robert Redford. I said, I saw him. He has his hands around your throat like that. It's like he thinks he's over you. And that, that pastor friend of mine goes, oh, my God. There's a guy in my church. He will not let me go start another church. He said, you're just called to this one church. And he wanted to start another church in another city. And, uh, and he said, look at my skin. My skin's breaking out. I'm under so much pressure because that guy's trying to control me. My, my Lauren, my daughter and I, we walked into the meeting and it, <laughs> I walked in there. I saw the guy over there. I said, Lauren, there's a the guy right over there. Now the Holy Ghost doesn't embarrass anybody. Yeah. He'll, he'll, embarrass, he'll embarrass, he embarrass, he embarrass hypocrites, uh, but yeah. you, you sin yeah. privately, he'll deal with you privately. But so, so the Lord had me preach on this pastor as an apostles type call. You can't control him and say you can only have this one church. That pastor is designed to start many churches. And the Holy Ghost began to emphasize you can, you can have different kinds of grace on you than just one kind of pastor. And the Holy Ghost through the Word of God helped that man set him free. He didn't try to control him anymore. Now see, that's a word of knowledge. I can tell you thousands of words of knowledge. I, I've been where I, all of a sudden I'm in a different place. I see somebody doing something. Uh, word of knowledge after word of knowledge. Okay, that's tasting of the powers of the world to come. I'll give you one. I was in Yuma, Arizona. You with me? I'm in Yuma. And I'm working for this prophet guy. I'm the shoeshine guy. I'm working at the book table. And uh, he finished preaching. I go back to the book table. All of a sudden, I have a vision. I see a push-pull airplane. You know what a push-pull is? It's got one engine going that way, one engine going that way. It's a twin, but they're, they're horizontally opposed like that. And I see the plane diving like that. I see papers coming up out of the plane. I see the pilot. He's, man, he's pulling on that yoke trying to save that airplane. And I see the pastor of the church we're in that night. And I'm at the book table having this vision. And I mean, the plane's in a dive. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is not good. I knew what it was, it was a word of wisdom. I've had other words of wisdom like that. They'd come to pass about seven or eight years later. I can tell you stories about that all night. But anyway, so I'm sitting there at the book table, wow, wow, what do I do, what do I do? Because I'm the shoe shine guy, I'm just here, I'm here to serve. Uh, I'm not here to prophesy. So we're going to go to Denny's and get us a Grand Slam. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. We're going to get us some pancakes, bacon, sausage. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. So we get to Denny's, and that pastor, we're sitting there, I'm eating my pancakes and all that. And the pastor goes, hey, man, I'm going. We're all sitting there, and I, I'm, just, I'm just being quiet because I'm, I'm trying to figure out, Lord, when do, I, when do I say something about this? And he goes, hey, I'm going flying tomorrow in a push-pull airplane. I'm like, holy cow. Because uh, I'd seen it, you know, 30 minutes before we even got there. So I'm just going to eat my pancakes. And I'm, okay, when do, when do I say something? Because I don't want to go, let's say it. Lord. Buckle up, buddy. It ain't, doesn't look good for you in the future. No. I see, see, the Lord will show you something about the future, but it doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, there's no fear. So I said, you know, when it, when it came time to the end, I was like, oh, i got to say something, you know, because I don't want to go the guy I'm worried for. Just, just hold that, brother. It's all over me. You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So I said, hey, uh, uh, Pastor, I said, I had a vision uh, before we came over here of you in a push-pull airplane. I said, I'll tell you what your pilot looks like. He's bald, got a little bit of white hair, kind of uh, blonde hair right there on the sides. Had these little glasses on. He's pulling on the yoke. Papers are flying up in that plane because the plane's in a, in a dive. And it's a push-pull. He goes, wow. I said, well, you know, don't be afraid. Just before you go over and fly with him, I'd get him checked out, make sure everything's, make sure everything's kosher. Just pray over the plane, do whatever. You'll know. you have peace. I've had words of wisdom where I was supposed to pray uh -huh. so something could change. This, I didn't have to pray because he was right there. It was really him. 
Okay? I flew from Yuma to Tulsa. The pastor called me. He said, I went out to the airport, checked the guy out. He'd used fraud. He said he had all these checkout rides and a push full. Had not. And he didn't go for a ride in that, with that pastor, with that guy in that plane. I could tell you other words of wisdom were just absolutely bizarre. I mean bizarre. Where God just did things where you're just like, wow, God, you're so cool. You know, okay, that's the power of the world to come. Now, hang with me. This is why I've done all this to get to this right here. During the millennial reign of Christ, the natural people that are rebuilding houses and building cars and their natural bodies, and when their kids reach age of accountability, you've got to preach to them Jesus. They're in natural things, and all of a sudden you have a word of knowledge. You have a vision. You see this man walking through the door, and he's going to go in and mess with somebody or rob a bank. All of a sudden you walk right through the wall and go, oh, no, you don't. Your name is Alan. You're going to try to do so-and-so. How would you know that? You do just like Jesus. Before you came over here, I saw you under the tree. He won't go, you're a prophet. He'll go, you're a saint of the Most High God. And you will stop crime on the earth. Amen. He said, you'll judge means you'll rule over them, angels, and you'll rule over nations, just like he raised up judges in the Old Covenant. I know that gets our gears moving a little bit, because most people think they're getting raptured and it's over. It's not over. You're just starting. Yeah. You're tasting of the powers of the world to come. You think about this, man, that raising people up. You have that in you when someone does something. Maybe someone's trying to clean the top of their house. They slip and fall off the top of their house, miss the ladder. Bam! They're laying there. Their back's broken. They're laying there going, wow. Uh, and all of a sudden, you've already seen it. You've had a word of wisdom. I've got to go over to such and such house. He's about to fall off the deal. And I've got to raise him up. You walk over in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the, the flow of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost will be so much easier. I can, I can give you more. I'm in a meeting uh, uh, years ago. I'm sitting back there in the back and I'm traveling with another guy I was preaching for. It's hard for me to even think of which one to do because I've got, I got so many stories that scares me. I'm sitting in the back, all of a sudden I saw a woman bent over by her bed. She said, I can't take the pressure anymore, I'm going to kill myself. There's a little doily on her side table there. Her bed, the springs were real old like that. And the guy I was with, he said, hey, you, you got something, Joe. I go, no, no, I didn't have because I was scared. It was like 1986, I wasn't, wasn't full time then, I was just starting to travel. So he walks around for a minute and he goes, hey, Joe, you got something. I said, okay. I came down, I said, there's a lady here. I saw you put your hands on your face, she said, you want to kill yourself. Can't take the pressure. Elderly woman. She come walking down the exact same one. I said, I'll tell you what your bed looks like, tell you what your table looks like, because that's right. God knows everything. He just does. He loves people. He doesn't want that woman to commit suicide. You'll be doing that kind of stuff on a continual basis. I'm preaching in Montgomery, Alabama. I see a vision, see two elderly women fist fighting, going just like this. I mean, they weren't going like this. They were swinging their arms like, it was like rock and roll, man. I was like, holy cow. I mean, I'm talking upper 70s, early 80s. Just, just going at it. I mean, that's not a cool sight to see sweet elderly ladies. I mean, just, just rock them, sock them, you know, with WWF. So, uh, so at the end of the service, this is in Bill McCray's church. Not Bill McCray, Bill McNeese. Bill McNeese's church in, in Montgomery. I said, all right, there's a couple ladies here. Now, you, you're in a fist fight out in the parking lot and you need to go to, to go tell the other one you're sorry and because uh, the Lord, Lord wants to fix that relationship he wants those ladies to be happy with each other after the service I saw the ladies while I was preaching because see the Lord, Lord Lord knows I walked out there to the book table they walked up to me and they said hey, can we talk to you I said sure I said come here they said we're, we're the ladies that got in a fight out in the parking lot I said you guys were going to town and she said yeah we're going to town and she said, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to walk in love toward each other. And I said something to him. I said, this is kind of cute. In every given situation, somebody has to be the adult. <laughs> you, you'll go through life, and that will preach to you forever. In every given situation. So see how the Holy Ghost, I mean, I can tell you story after story after story where, where he's trying to help, he wants to help that relationship with that, 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 those two ladies. He wants to help that pastor. That pastor started that other church, and that other church is growing more than the other church he has because he obeyed God. Okay, so there's a flourishing of this. That's why Brother Hagin, he always goes back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He taught my people faith, but he loves the flow of the Holy Ghost to invest in your life a mentality of what these activities of the Holy Ghost are. Yeah. Right now, they're harvesting tools. In the next dispensation, they'll be what you used to operate all the time. Hmm. I mean, when Jesus was there and Nathaniel came walking up, Jesus said, indeed, as an Israelite, whom's no guile. He goes, how'd you know that? Freaked him out. He goes, well, I saw you under the tree. He goes, oh, you're a prophet. He goes, this is nothing. It was a word of knowledge. He goes, hereafter, you'll see the heavens open, angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Like, this word of knowledge ain't nothing. I'm operating from a whole nother level than what you're thinking. Hmm. 
because there's a whole other realm that we've just been so carnal and so fleshly. I'm not talking about adultery or murder. We've just gotten so accustomed to the flesh that when that other realm's in operation, boy, it seems like our group just backed away from it. But it's, the, it's the, that realm of the glory of God. Hallelujah. So we should learn to be servants in this life and, and walk in humility. The Holy Ghost can't use a lot of people because there's so much ego. Mm -hmm. He's having to compete with, with them. Mm -hmm. That's why most preachers have to work for other preachers for so many years to get beat up for so many years so they realize that, you know what I mean, they realize that, that they ain't so cool. Because I've been around all the Barney Five guys. Oh, yeah. I've had so many miracles. You know, they, they walk like that. and Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> I had one person's leg get healed the other night. And they walk around like that. And it's the Barney Five deal. It's just like Jesus coming into Jerusalem. They said, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that donkey's going, check it out, man. No, it's not the donkey. It's who's riding on the donkey. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. That's where we get a famous word that you could say right now that I won't say. Don't be like that. <laughs> Amen. So, we're, let's look at this last verse. Man, I've preached a long time. Wow. 40 minutes. Help me, Jesus. Go to Revelation. We're closing right now. We're closing, 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 closing. Mm. Yeah. What are we doing? We're closing. Amen. That's what we're doing. All right. <laughs> Go to Revelation 20. I'll show you this one point and then we'll, we'll go home. This is our destiny. This is our, this is our future. Mm. Look at Revelation 20. This is kind of bizarre. This is even bizarre than what we'll be doing. You could really get into that a lot more about what we'll be doing. But uh, it's, it's amazing. Revelation 20, verse 7. This is cool. I, I wish we could have gotten this when we were younger, you know. Revelation 20, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. This is bizarre. To go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog, Magog, to gather them together, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. Wow. This is with Jesus reigning for a thousand years, with you and I enforcing that, that kingdom, with Israel reigning on the earth as the head of the nations, when nothing but perfect happening, Satan is released to go go grab the rebels that didn't get born again that you were preaching to. Because they go, well, yeah, I know he's reigning right there, but I really don't want to receive him. So watch this. God, through every dispensation, gives man an opportunity to either accept him or reject him. And even with the devil bound, they reject him. The number is as the sand of the sea. So there's a huge number of people that when you preach to them, they still didn't receive him and he's right yeah. there in Jerusalem. Yeah. How cool would that be? I tell you, he's the same yesterday, today, forever. Right there. He's the same. I mean, I mean, you point, he's right behind you. You know what I'm saying? How cool would that be? So watch what happens here. The number of whom is the sand of the sea. In verse 9, this is the last rebellion right here ever. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. Now, if you, if you read that in the Greek, it means they're almost like in, they're, they're, the circumference of them are airborne, just like in, like in flying saucers. Like they're all airborne over Jerusalem. So technology's really advanced in that thousand years. Just like all the movies you see, you can't, you can't come up with something like that if it's not available. You can't hunger for something that's not available. So watch what happens to them. They encompass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Wow. So those natural people during that thousand years that you sow into their lives, you're operating in the gifts of the Spirit, you're teaching them about the authority in the name of Jesus, that you've had this radical investment right now to be just like Pastor Ed said, you're, you're bridging that gap from forerunners into this dispensation for the next one. As you start out in that first thousand years, you'll be those people that are having kids, man, when they reach the age of accountability, you'll be going, His name is Jesus. He is righteous. Wow. And the ones that rebel at the end are toast. But all during that thousand years, you're going to have fruit and harvest just like you have now. Because so many people go, I don't want the Lord to come because I, I got so much in my heart. Yes, you have a lot in your heart. You're going to live forever. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, I had to... Um, had a couple fender strats over the years, and the Lord tell me to give them away. Kind of, we were talking about it this morning. Kind of hard to keep. I, I, I like to collect them. It's kind of hard to collect them to give them away. So I got a Telecaster, and before I got the Telecaster, I bought this little cheap guitar because I like to play the guitar. And um, and you know what the Lord told me? I was getting ready to buy this little cheap guitar. It's just a little electric guitar. It looked like a Les Paul. It's pretty cool. He said, why don't, you, "Why don't you learn how to play every instrument?" I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" He goes, "You're going to live forever." I'm like, wow. I mean, we just think so mm -hmm. right here. Uh -huh. I want you to learn how to play the violin. I want you to play the piano. I want you to learn to do all. Do it all. Wow. We, we have been so hoodwinked by the devil that we look right here in front of us. And you need to live for eternity. I know this is a whole different message because, see, that's why I travel. 
See, I could have come in and taught faith, but Pastor Ed can teach faith better than anybody. You know what I'm saying? So a traveling guy has to be a specialist. I'm trying to show you it's worth it to get everything you can right now because God's going to need to use you really at the beginning of that first thousand years because you've lived here when the earth is just like it is now. Moses getting here right now. He's been in heaven for 4,500 years. Tell him to go, hey, we're going to go play golf. We're going to go do what? <laughs> I have a rod. It's budding. <laughs> I can't, can't play very good. I mean, just, you know, I know that people will be able to relate, but you'll really be able to relate because you've been living here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's wonderful things ahead. Pray in tongues more than you've ever prayed in tongues. Get so acquainted with the Holy Ghost that the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestations of the Holy Ghost are a piece of cake. They're as the Spirit wills. Yeah. That's easy. But you, you put yourself in a position where you're just, He'll flow through you. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you, you're doing anything to put the brakes on with Him. Why is that? He wants to give you words of wisdom now so you'll go out and minister to people. You see yourself doing this and you act it out. Very simple. Kind of easy to do something when you've already seen it. Mm -hmm. I've preached on that here before, but man, I've had tons of words of wisdom, been in the service, and all of a sudden acted out what I saw, and I'm like, holy cow, I'm, you talk about deja vu. Yeah. But you can do it pretty easy because you've already seen it. That's right. So that's words of wisdom. That's future revelation. Be cool. Be very cool. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Great, great, great. Great increase. Great revelation for the church. Great peace yeah. for the church. Amen. Lord told me this year, he said, there'll be an expression of joy that the church has never even experienced. They'll, they'll, they'll get it this year. He said, but it'll come without fanfare. You'll just be happier than you've ever been. And you won't even know why. It's Jesus. <laughs> it's Jesus. The, the nth degree of joy and peace and love, the love that comes out of him will just so shock you when you get there. He's appeared to me a few times, and every time I couldn't, even, I couldn't function, I bawled, cried like a baby. Uh, not because he's mad at me? No, because he loves me. I couldn't handle his love. His love so overwhelming, it freaked me out. Wow, we're about to be there forever. Woo, hallelujah. All right, so Jesus is coming back. I know I skipped over a whole lot, but this is the event, man. He's coming back. And you're going to be raptured seven years before that second coming. And I, I'm sure that we'll have a little bit of boot camp while we're up there, going to the reward seat, go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You talk about a party. Woo, wow. Mm. You'll see all your loved ones that have gone home before you. Have a great reunion. And we'll worship Him. We'll honor, we'll honor Him. Man, thank you for coming tonight. What a great future you all have. Good to see the young guys here worshiping God, doing the will of God. Man, that's righteous. That's righteous. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that our future is bright. We thank you for what you have for the believer. Father, thank you that we got to live in the church age. Wow. We're so grateful. Grateful, grateful. Father, we, we come to this point in the service just to worship you and honor you. And thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. By yourself, you purged our sins. Thank you for dying for us. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. We'll pray over these cloths for a minute, but I want to make sure I don't miss a word of knowledge, you know. I miss a miracle, whatever. I, I, you know, I have weird words of knowledge. Uh, the other night, where was I? I had someone, I said saliva, and a, a lady come down, her saliva glands were shot. I had Birmingham, saw a woman fly fishing, catch the hook in her eye. Uh, same service, saw a guy fall down the stairs, prayed for him. Saw a guy get run over by a car. He was right there on the front row. Weird words of knowledge. I mean, bizarre. Like, uh, but God just wants to take care of damage. Amen. I saw a g gash on a tongue on Terre Haute, Indiana. Called out, little boy, been playing with a snapping turtle. Snap it. He stuck his tongue out, snapping turtle, ripped his tongue wide open. And he, he was healed right there in Terre, Terre Haute, Indiana. Can anything good come out of Terre Haute? Help me, Jesus. I'll just, let's just thank him for just a minute, and then we'll, we'll pray over these cloths. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you for revelation for us about our future. Revelation about our destiny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. We are so grateful for your blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. 
I thank you, Lord, that your mercy endures forever. Your mercy endures forever. We magnify your mercy tonight. Father, we thank you for these claws. We lay hands on these claws now. Just like in Acts 19.11, you wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul. And we thank you that this presence, your glory, your nature, Father, your nature, it is life everlasting and it creates life everywhere it goes. So we thank you as we lay hands on them that they're put on the bodies, the sicknesses will depart, evil spirits will go out, and the people will be healed and strong. We thank, we thank you for it, Father. Wow. Thank you for your glory surcharging these claws. Surcharging these claws, Father. Surcharging them. Hallelujah. We thank you. They're surcharged. They're charged, Lord. Surcharged. Charged to do the will of God in those bodies, Lord. Just as those handkerchiefs and aprons, they were put on him, Father, your presence when them. We're so thankful for the wonderful reports that the people are healed. Woo! Hallelujah. Let me see, I can feel like going down in my legs while I'm putting hands on the cloth. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Well, praise the Lord. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Good for His presence to go into people's bodies. He paid for it. They might as well enjoy it, right? Hey, who's, who's had whiplash? I want to pray for your neck. Whiplash. We'll get you fixed up. It may have been, um, I don't know, what do you call it? Um, it may have been a car wreck. Maybe something else. You may have been skiing. You may have been skateboarding. You may have been bungee jumping. You may have been skydiving. I don't know. Well, I'll pray for your neck. Who's got the damage in your neck real quick? This other thing is a socket. You know, um, I'll just show you. I'm preaching in my church out in California. Not my church. I was visiting there about 10 years ago. And I, I had a vision. I saw somebody's calf. I said, it looks like varicose veins, but it's not varicose veins. It's like someone hit you with a two before, and, and it looks like varicose veins, but it's not. And this man yelled out, damn. He cussed right there. He goes, that's me. He goes, I got hit by two before. I'm going in for surgery on my calf. So, so God will take care of damage. Yes. I mean, hear that man cussed and still got healed. <laughs> Yeah, he's in my church. I see him all the time. Hey, dude, how you doing? How's your calf doing? I said, I'm good. Where's the, the, the socket, like shoulder or hip? And the other thing is your neck, your, your vertebrae. Whiplash. We'll wait for you. I mean, this is what I do for a living, so I'm not in a hurry. We'll just uh, have you come. We'll pray for you. A lot of times, I'd, lately I've been going out there, but they don't even have to come down. You know, it's full service church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what happened to your shoulder? I don't know. It just it hurts a lot all the time. Okay. Just over a period of time. Okay. Yeah, well, just, let's pray. Pleasant. <laughs> well, you know, he, he was beaten, so you wouldn't have to have it. Amen. So let's take advantage of it. Lord, thank you for blessing our sister. We're so grateful that she's saved. So grateful with that package comes her body being whole. So we speak to this socket, her shoulder socket. We command this, wow, you scar tissue, you be gone from that socket right now. And we command it to be totally whole in the wonderful name of Jesus. We receive, Lord, what you did for us 2,000 years ago. Done. Isn't it wonderful? We don't have to talk him into it. We just get to take it. Wow. Amen. You're blessed. And it could get your shoulder fixed up. Good to get your shoulder. Where's the, where's the whiplash? Whiplash. Man, I can miss it. I'll be, I'll be real bold to tell you. I can miss it by a mile. Dear Lord. But I could talk to you all night about the crazy stories. You go, holy smokes. Isn't that the truth? I could. I could talk. I could talk you, you go, that's not possible. Whiplash, whiplash. Going once, going twice. What do we have for him, Bob? <laughs> Amen. Oh, wow. He loves you so much, you want your neck fixed up. Yeah. Amen. He just does. He just loves you. I was in Newtown. Had a word of knowledge. Somebody had damage in their kidneys. Nobody came down. Lord says, that guy right there. I said, you got the damage, don't you? He said, yeah, I just went on dialysis. Barry Fredericks, the pastor's name. Wow. Mm, hallelujah. He'll fix you up. He's the quicker fixer-upper. <laughs> and you may be here and you've never done that where you got your neck prayed for. That's okay. I won't hit you. I'll just pray for you. <laughs> well, I have hit people before. <laughs> but, they, but, 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 but they got healed, you know. <laughs> That's the lady I hit last time I was here. And there was a couple here. The lady was a federal prosecuting attorney. That was standing right there, and they go. They went to my meetings in Hobbs, New Mexico. Went to my meetings in Iowa. Went to my meetings in Galveston. Went to my meetings in uh, 
I mean, they can't in Ohio. They just show up everywhere because that lady's an ex-Muslim and loves to see the power of God. I said, in your church, I said, how many of you have never seen the power of God come down here right now? You've never seen a miracle. Remember that? I said, come here. The lady had been in a car wreck and the Lord told me here on the back of the head. Pow! And that, that lady that just converted from Muslim, she goes, man, they just show up all over the country. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Federal prosecuting attorney. <laughs> I'm, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Where's the neck person? I don't want to miss you, you know, because I, I, I don't, I mean, because I, I could miss it, man. I could miss it by a mile, but he just loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. You know what he told me right before I walked in? It's amazing. I'm thinking about what all i got to preach on. He goes, make sure they know I love them. Make sure they know that I love them. Perfect love casts out fear. Casts out fear. Praise God. All right, we'll wait on the, the neck one for a minute. We'll make sure I don't miss anything, then we'll go home. You're early tonight. It's 8.15. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Let's thank you for a second, and then we'll go. Lord, Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Hallelujah. We bless you and magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. It endures forever. We thank you that it endures forever. Your righteousness. Wow, we love you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for your equipment for this church. We thank you for the call for this church, Lord. We thank you for a flourishing for faith and victory. For the days ahead, a, 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 a lurching forward of the will of God. We thank you for a momentum for faith and victory, Lord. We thank you for great grace upon this church, Lord. We thank you for a lighthouse of the glory of God. For miracles, signs and wonders to be wrought here and be taken out of here. We thank you as they go out into the streets and in their, their workplace, Father. The supernatural equipment of the Holy Ghost will function through them with such ease. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Man, expect words of knowledge. Expect words of wisdom. Expect, uh, uh, use your authority. Be, use the name of Jesus and expect heaven to function with you, to cooperate with you, and you cooperate with Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, I, th I appreciate you coming on Sunday night. As busy as all your lives are, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. I just want to make sure I don't miss, miss miracles. I've waited before. Grabbed my Bible, and the Lord said, fingernails. So I said, what? Well, nothing wrong with my fingernails. And a lady had been saying all day, this is Brandon, Florida. She'd been saying all day, I'm going to get my fingernails tonight. I'm going to get my fingernails. Bill McDonald's a pastor. So I'm walking off. So he wants to heal people so bad that he'll yell it to you while you're walking off. Fingernails. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. He's good. Somebody's skin's being healed. Just take it. You don't even have to come down. Somebody, the inside lining in your nose is being healed too. Just take it. Wow. He's just good. You, something you hadn't even thought of. He'll, he'll take care of it. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you. A lot of you I've known for years. and Some of you are new to me, but thank you for coming. Thank you for being so easy to preach to. And uh, being so good and sweet. We'll uh, look forward to seeing what happens. I believe you have a great summer. Yeah. Explosion. Jesus is coming very soon. Make sure you exhort, exhort each other. Have a great, great spring and summer. Oh. Amen, amen. Wow. Man, the presence of God. You just feel it's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Sound man, you're blessed for being so faithful. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, aren't you? Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Wow, you know, I, I just had something for, for Dr. Bill right there. You watch. There'll, there'll, there'll be. This is a, this is weird how the Lord uses the word. There'll be a recirculation of the will of God for your life. You know what I mean? It, you know, I would think of the word restoration, but it's a recirculation of even things that were given to you in years gone by that you thought, well, that will that won't be for this day, won't be for that day. You watch. It will come to you almost like a wave. And you'll go like, wow, I hadn't thought of that in years, hadn't thought of that in years, hadn't thought of that in years, hadn't thought of that in years. And all of a sudden, boom! All of a sudden, you're doing those things that He put in you years ago. Wow. And it'll be with great ease. I mean, no, no laboring. I like no labor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's sure good to see you. Have a great, great night. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great summer. Dr. Ed, I think that's all I have. Just for sure don't want to miss a miracle, but uh, it's good to be in church. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Bless you, bless you. Have a great night. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, I've always, I get kind of tickled because a lot of times you'll have, like tonight, somebody, you got that, well, he missed it. Somebody didn't come up. I've seen time and time and time again, after service is over, somebody come and say, well, that was me. 
Well, why didn't you come up? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. They just they don't know. They don't have a reason for it or whatever. 